in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed say so lord i won't go back you're doing a great work in my life. You've changed my mindset. You've changed my life. You've revealed deep things to me. I won't go back. No pressure will make me go back. Go ahead and pray. This song describes the heart of what God is doing in our midst. Transforming people. How can you go back to the way you used to think, to the way you used to perceive realities, to your old ways of life? I would go back not to those associations again, not to those mindsets, not to those strongholds. Speak over your life in one minute, prophesy, call yourself what the word of God calls you. Lift your voice and pray. I'm blessed, I'm above in the name of Jesus. I'm a city set on a hill, cannot be hidden. Come on, prophesy. Bakala po shadaya. The light of the world. The definition of darkness is the world without me. I carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Mashabala na 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 doing wonders through my life hallelujah i'm not ordinary the head and not the tail above and not beneath moving from glory to glory from faith to faith in the name of the lord jesus moving by the spirit of the living god i know no limitations the hand of god is upon my life Make sure you are prophesying over your life. I call myself the great. I call myself the anointed. I call myself the blessed of the Lord. I call myself the prosperous of the Lord. I call myself the wise of the Lord. I'm walking in the path of righteousness, the path of holiness. I'm a miracle worker. I'm a sign and a wonder. The hand of God is strong and mighty upon my life. I have a glorious destiny. Faith in my spirit to believe the word of God. I see no limits in the name of Jesus. Full of the ability of the spirit. More than a conqueror. Prophesy to yourself. More than a conqueror through the power of the Holy Ghost more than a conqueror you are shaking your generation by the power of the Holy Ghost Hallelujah Faith proclamations are very powerful when they are done with revelation it's important to speak for the Bible says the righteousness of faith speaks 
the Bible says, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believe and so I declared, I spoke. We also believe like them and so we declare. We are not making empty noises. Let me tell you something. We are not just making empty noise. We are speaking in the air. We are speaking in the realm of the spirit. We are making spiritual deposits. The Bible says, He that soweth in the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. But he that sows in the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for tonight. Once again, an opportunity to be blessed. We give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus. Hug ten people and sit down quickly. God bless you. Make sure you hug people and laugh. We laugh in this place and we smile. Pack up whatever you came with. Throw it outside. God bless you. Thank you. Be seated. All right. Bring out your bios, books, and let's get to the word quickly. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm teaching on the subject strongholds of the mind. Powerful message. Hallelujah. You can call it the part two of one message we preached last year. Victorious mindset. That was in Blue Roof. Please make sure you are writing something. Or at least you can use a notepad on your phone or something. Write. He told John, after John had seen great things, he said, write. Because you will forget. He said, write. Even in heaven there is writing. Write. For these words are faithful and true. You are awesome in this place. You are awesome in this place. Thank you, Jesus. You are awesome in this place. Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. You are awesome. You are awesome in this place. This is our testimony. Lord, you're awesome. You are awesome. Yes, majestic. Awesome. Changing lives. Transitions. You are awesome in this place. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 You are mighty in our midst. You are mighty. Sing, you are mighty. You are mighty in me. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. For all the miracles, you're truly mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place, faithful God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You are welcome in this place. 
We welcome that sweet spirit once again. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place. Faithful God. Faithful God. Hallelujah. things you are doing SS changing to AA unbelievable miracles in the midst of your people we thank you for the works of Jesus in our midst Lord we thank you Lord we thank you just give me a minute or two let me just thank God I'm grateful. I'm grateful, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for your glorious presence. I hail you most high. You are my God. I hail you most high. I help you most high, you are my God. I hail you most high. Sing it one more time. I hail you. I hail you most high, you are my God. I hail you most high. For you are bigger than what we What we say, for you are bigger than what we say. You are bigger than what we say. You are bigger than what we say.
Lord, we love you. This is all we do tonight. It's worth it. Thank you. King of my life, you are my all. And I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my all. And I lay my life for you. King of my life, you are my all. And I live for you alone. King of my life, you have my all. And I lay my life for you. My heart is yours. You're the king of my life. Hallelujah. Numbers. Are you in numbers? Strongholds of the mind. Numbers 13. This was the story of the 12 spies. I'll be very brief and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. And the Lord spake unto the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Okay, let's start from 13, 26. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron as the spies now and to all the congregation of the children of israel unto the wilderness of paran and kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told him and said we came unto the land to which thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it Nevertheless, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the edge of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it 31 but the men that went up with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we hallelujah bless your word tonight strengthen us in the name of jesus now mindsets i want to talk a little about mindsets right please mindsets mindsets a mindset is a value system an ideology hallelujah my good friend, come and shake me. Forget about the people. Come and give me a big hug. If you like, hug me, Seb. I've missed you. This way, Jerry. Thank you. I love her. I appreciate her. Many of you, if I say she come out, you, how are you? I missed you, Jerry. Give me five. Yes, I go back to the seat. God bless you. A mindset is an ideology, your value system your plane of perception the 
the platform from which you judge and interpret things is called a mindset there are some scriptures that i read in the bible that really made me afraid over the years one of them is for as a man thinketh in his heart so is he how can god equate a man's life with the content in, in his heart he said for as a man thinketh in his heart and then another scripture says guard your heart have you ever come across that scripture it says guard your heart with all diligence be meticulous about it he said for out of it hallelujah new living translation says for with it you will chart the course of your destiny guard your heart with all diligence hallelujah it's always an honor for me to talk not just with different people but young people because what god is about to do in the nations is very prophetic and we are his battle acts we are the tools that god will be using to accomplish all that he'll be doing hallelujah but then there is a big mountain that we need to conquer in africa in nigeria in zaria and only god knows where else hallelujah i took out time to study the history of nigeria and a bit about africa i'm not a historian and i got to find out that as a result of the colonial rule hallelujah a spirit and a mindset was put upon the black race are you listening to me and that mindset is a curse a mindset that teaches men that all about your life is servitude are you listening to me when although nigerians gained their independence they were not free until today we are still not free and if we must rise up listen to me to that prophetic destiny that god has designed for us then we must come out of certain mindsets tonight's message will wrestle a lot of mindsets and kick them out of your life hallelujah i began to find out in my life that a man can never rise above and beyond his mindset i know many of you have heard it but write it you can never rise beyond your mindset your plane of perception did you know the limitation in africa today is not the natural resources in this country or in this continent africa is the richest continent in the whole world hallelujah nigeria is a very prophetic nation yet there's still death corruption poverty mindsets hallelujah and this mindset has eaten into the educational system of this country hallelujah such that when someone writes jam as soon as they give him admission the next thing he's eyeing one position just eyeing one office oh lord let me be a clerk let me be a secretary no productivity no advancement no thinking out of the box we have become managers of the realm that we found ourselves no breaking status quo to do anything hallelujah some of you your parents have told you just follow it don't try to do anything new hallelujah the bible lets us know that 12 spies were sent to go and look at the land of canaan and the bible says they all came back happy they gave moses and aaron the report they said it was wonderful i mean the land is truly flowing with milk and honey hallelujah and then 10 of them says but nevertheless in other words taste the fruit delicious really nice however we saw certain kinds of people that are half humans and have something else six fingers six toes terrible people to the extent that our mind interpreted us as grasshoppers before them hallelujah said the jebusites the hittites 
the Anakites dwelt in that land. And while they were speaking, a man called Caleb was just listening. And he allowed them to finish speaking nonsense. And then he says, well, this is my own report. Let us go up at once. In other words, look, we are more than ready. He said we can take these people. Forget about their height. There are two animals that Jesus associates himself with in the Bible. Number one is the lion. Number two is the eagle. And this bird and this animal, they are the king of their kingdoms. Hallelujah. And this is not because, for instance, the lion. The lion is not the strongest. The lion is not the wisest. Hallelujah. The lion is not the biggest. But there is an attitude. There is a mindset. The lion has a resolve and a determination. And he made him to become the king of the jungle. Follow me tonight. The eagle is such a robust creature. Such a robust bird. That history tells us that the eagle does not fly. It doesn't flap its wing. It soars. It will rise to a high altitude and stand. And for a long time, try to gauge the current of the wind. While other birds are just flying and hoping that the wind goes their direction. The eagle will stand. Such powerful vision that from a high mountain top, the eagle can look at a lamb and come with accuracy and precision and pick it up. Hallelujah. Strong animal many qualities about these creatures for instance the lion will never eat any meat it did not kill if you give it dead meat no it will kill by itself understands the power of conquest and honor and jesus calls himself the lion of those many animals in judah is the lion of the tribe of judah hallelujah and the eagle to the extent that God loves these creatures that he designed creatures after this likeness and put them before his throne. The lion, the calf, the face of a man and the face of the flying eagle. The first thing I want to let you know is that mindsets are a sum total of number one, your environment. Your environment, right? Your mindset is a sum total of your environment. Number two, your experiences. Your environment, cultures, your mindset. Those of us outside, are we following? Say amen. Hallelujah. Your environment, your experiences. Number three, your cultural background. Cultural background. cultural background number four your level of orientation and exposure hallelujah praise god these are mind builders so look up every one of us when we get born again we come into christ with heterogeneous mindsets that are a derivative of many factors are you listening to me i've always given this an exam as an example someone who grew up in portacot or worry or lagos has a different mindset and an ideology from someone who grew up in zaria is that correct in zaria here a boss can stop and reverse just because of one person and can delay and wait but down south there's no time for that you have to find a way of maneuvering yourself to jump out if you're interested in highlighting at that point because the people are serious and they are ready to move forward there are certain mindsets hallelujah in the north for instance i mean you don't need to bow down or bend or do anything just maintain some level of courtesy and speak softly and you greet someone and that's okay 
But in the south, you, that's not enough. Hallelujah. No matter how tall you are, you must bend down and greet. These are mindsets. Now, and it so happened that a majority of the factors that shape our mindsets did not come from the word of God. Hallelujah. Please follow me. This is very important. And so, as many as our heads are, just imagine that there are no bodies in this auditorium. Plenty heads. A summation of various mindsets. Hallelujah. Various mindsets. You have arrived at certain conclusions about life based on certain things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you come into Christ and you get born again, immediately the Holy Ghost begins his work of transformation. And that transformation is not just changing you as it were physically, but he begins to work on your mindset. He begins to scrutinize and edit your mindset thoroughly. And let me tell you something, this does not happen overnight. Are you listening to me? Because you have come to gain security and confidence over certain mindsets. For instance, there are certain people who never believe that they can make it in life on their own. There must be an external help somewhere. I don't mean godly help. You get what I'm saying. They can never. There are students that even if you give them the exam question before the exam, they will still fail. The only thing is that let me copy it and answer it in a sheet and then enter with it. Mindset. That's how they, they, they went from primary one to JS1. During Waek, that was what happened. That's how they wrote jam. It has become a mindset. So when you say you are victorious, you say, of course, with my paper on my hand and my ability to be crafty and cunning, I know I'll make it in this life. Hallelujah. There are other people who believe that the way to treat people is an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. What else for what again? Leg for leg, anything. Do me as I do you. Don't say that other part because it's very ungodly. Hallelujah. And so we have all kinds of, we, we have guys who come from cultures where a lady cannot talk looking at the guy in the eye. Correct? She will bow down or do whatever. Now you come into a new environment and you carry your village with you. And you are moving everywhere hoping that everyone is that atmosphere mindsets so now you are in a class for instance or you are in koinonia like this and they say give your neighbor a high five and you are wondering there are contemplations in your heart what kind of disrespectful environment is this mindsets let me tell you, as you see people move, they are carrying several things with them. They may be quiet. You may put with one on it. You may bab it only. They are mindsets. Mindsets. There are certain people who have never seen a miracle in their life. Never seen one. And so the day they see anything, I watch the faces of people during miracle service. And I see the shock that happens. When you lift your hands and someone falls by your side, you're just mindsets. Every time the word of God comes, you know what it does? It's like an arrow. And it hits different mindsets. So mindsets say, lie, lie, I don't agree. It begins to challenge your mindset. And it's like a wall. Strongholds. Listen, demons take advantage of these mindsets and they access certain lives. There are many families today who believe that they believe in what I call traditional Christianity. You, you get my point? We love God. We we'll go to church on Sunday. However, we won't go and visit the man, but there are certain things we can take along with us. When the going gets tough, it's the tough that gets going. And so we use that mantle. Where is the God of our herbalist? And you use it to part the Red Sea. And so there are mindsets mindsets there are many fathers today for instance 
The day the wife calls him darling, he looks and says, ah, what is my wife watching? That's supposed to be a lovely compliment. But the man will be offended for maybe months. I said, what kind of disrespect is this? Hallelujah. Or a small child just say, mommy, I need to tell you something. He said, you didn't add my mindset. There are guys who will never greet a lady, for instance, and say, you must be the one to greet me. That's how it is in our village. So, they are carrying it again. Atmosphere. Mindset. Although you are born again, now follow me. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you carry it with you. And when God wants to step in and do something in your life, those mindsets stand as strongholds. Are you listening to me? And so, God must break those mindsets and they give way. There are some of you who never believe that you can help anybody. There's one very dangerous house statement. What the Aleba Kumusamu. Don't ever find yourself confessing that statement. It's a curse on yourself. Hallelujah. There are people who believe, listen to me. There are people who believe that they can never be blessed to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. There are other people who believe. I'm telling you, maybe some of you are even here. There are some people who believe God can never hear them directly. They say, pray for us. You think they are joking, but they mean it. I want to ask you a question tonight. What mindset did you come here with tonight? Because God is about to work on certain mindsets. Dangerous and terrible mindsets. There are people who believe, for instance, you can get born again, get into a relationship, sleep around. So long as you are going to marry the lady, guaranteed. It's a mindset. So when the word of God is coming about purity and holiness, that mindset says, forget it. Who is not doing it? There are mindsets that believe that if you want honor, be a pastor. Correct? And sadly, there are many ministries. That's what they call spiritual development. So the day you get born again, your ambition, your goal, your plan is to come to a point where you become a pastor. So all the brothers want to be pastors. And if you are not a pastor, you are a failure based on the mindset that has been created. So everybody is moving around. I'm a pastor. I'm this, I'm that. There are certain people, listen, who because of the challenges that they went through, they you drank gari using your hand. Eh? You mix the sugar with your hand and drank it. So that anger is still in you. And you are looking for the people to vent that anger on. So the day they make you a leader, you try to make sure you prove to everybody you are not as naive as before again. Why did you bring fork for me to eat this food? Why did you do this? As if you were not using your hands before. Mindsets. And we, are you getting blessed tonight? And we use these things to define our behavior with other people. There are other people who believe that once you are simple with certain people, they disrespect you. So the moment they see anybody, they square up their shoulder. Say, please bring me my blackberry. Say, no, the other one, I mean the bold, bold what? Not the other one. Or let me even use the galaxy tab. I think that one will be faster. What is, who cares? Now, you think the people are being impressed. And someone else with his mindset is being surprised. He's saying, you mean this is the definition of fulfillment in this man's world? Hallelujah. So the guy is coming close to a lady and he's flipping his phone. And in his world, he has people like him. He has found them around. So they have become groups. They are mindsets. So who is wearing which watch? Who is wearing this? And that's all his pursuit. That's what drives him. You are sitting at the back, but you believe based on your mindset that everybody is seeing you. Mindsets can be terrible. Let me tell you. Mindsets. Hallelujah. There are guys that come with mindsets. They believe. No lady can tell me no. I ask any lady I want at any time. I don't hear no. I am this. I am chief this. I am chief that devilish satanic 
strongholds of the mind are you following me now there are mindsets there are certain people who have been taught money doesn't grow on trees all these tags they are deceiving you all these giving you better keep your money they can have one million naira you you have ten thousand if you give them hundred naira they'll collect and add it mindsets and there are all kinds of books to help and massage that mindset and keep you in it hallelujah do you realize that every one of us in this place including myself have mindsets that have built up themselves as strongholds are you listening to me and except these mindsets are conquered some of us will never rise beyond our present level hallelujah there are certain people they go to school they do everything but their mindset still takes them i was listening to one man he said he's gone abroad he did this but he likes his local dish it's his best food i say it's a lie it's a lie you went abroad what did you eat where did you go abroad is it's like say i studied science where did you go which restaurant he said he came back and he found out that all those things are junk not everything is junk oh. let me tell you the truth just tell us based on your level of financial resources and the exposure that was available at that time you went to a place that did not create the best of pictures but don't because there are certain people living in a higher realm of life and you see the thing about mindsets is this listen there are two factors or forces that can help you get out of mindsets number one the word of god or number two premature exposure the danger is that if it's not the word of god that begins to reorient your mind you're going to become a disaster because when you suddenly realize let me give you an example someone who always just enters express express just stop he carries you to wherever you are going and then one day someone gives you a lift you've always known you are fine it's just that you didn't know the accent and then someone just stopped you in his bmw x5 i've been talking about that car hallelujah for me or you you are a student you better read your book you have exams next week hallelujah now you enter the car ah, suddenly you begin to find out that you mean there is a higher realm of life than what i have known hallelujah you sit down the seat adjusts itself on you how your mind something is happening at that point when you drop from that car what happens it leaves you with a memory the memory displaces something in your car your roommate that used to say hi you now say ah don't things are changing orientation are you listening to me or they now make you a leader whether a leader of your fellowship or something and suddenly for the first time they held your bible you've never known how it feels you've only imagined it ah, and you wanted to behave yourself but later on you couldn't hide it you laughed and you smiled and then everybody wants to leave the old for new if you taste of the new and is better you will dump the old quickly when i was in port Harcourt, there was a preacher the church i attended there fulfilling world ministries and the man of god traveled abroad to uk for the first time they gave him three thousand pounds as honorarium when he came back pastor he said i saw a level of life that is better than the way you wicked members in this church have been subject no really and he in anger he said so i am this valuable and you people who have been playing with me you go and see the way other people have you seen people like that say from today from today and called for certain partners that will be sowing into his life every week to the end of that year it was a, and they did something wrong in the church and he left he was going the members had to run and bring him i sat down there and i said you see you see why god doesn't answer some prayers you see why god doesn't answer oh god take me even if he's gonna take me out of this country
and God says the way you are if your leg matches the international airport you you will come back you will not hear God again or anybody there are people like that too. they give you 5,000 naira home and abroad that's all you have you just have to depend on God and use it well one day you went to your friend's house and the father gave you 100,000 ah! you did everything you did in your small world and there was still change you didn't even know what to do with it again from that time the day you see your father counting 5,000 you are just tapping your hand and say if you won't give me I know how to get it now I'm smart this is what leads people into prostitution they tested something that looked better than the old life but it was not a derivative of the word of God and so there's that craving if I can just sleep with this orgasa and 200,000 is my own it's not like it's for us to share my own who will know and they start before you know it they are changing mindsets and so our goal in this place because there are many of you the way you are receiving the word of God your mindsets are saying no it's just your head that is saying yes when you are saying yeah yeah your mind is saying you are joking I'm not giving way I will preserve this mindset there are some of you who will see someone maybe your friend going to go and sleep with one man traveling even during this exam now going to go and collect the money for exam and you say well the way I am you know it's not good to disturb people who told you this this issue of it's not good they used to say this should not be done start scrutinizing the foundation of your mindset where did it come from hallelujah are you listening to me see those mindsets responding in anger i'm seeing all of them the mindsets just coming from east west north middle belt all of them just rising we will crumble them tonight in the name of Jesus because the Bible says Psalm 78 from verse 10 down to 17 and when you read further the Bible says that the nation of Israel haven't gone through 430 years of captivity the children were born in slavery born in servitude hallelujah the Bible says when they went to the wilderness they limited God by saying can God make a way in the wilderness do you know there are some of our parents today who do not ever believe that they can buy a new car I mean brand new I'm not talking of Belgium brand new that you are the one who removes the rubber when you say that they just laugh this stupid boy you are still your grow up and you understand what is all that and there are many of us from the time you were earning 5,000, now God has helped you. You are earning 250,000 to buy a new shirt. The day you buy it, you will cry. Because it looks like you lost a baby. Mindsets. You are in the boutique, you are just frowning. You come back, what happened? I bought a new shirt. This is something that is supposed to be a blessing. But that mindset of suffering, you are used to it. To the extent that when God wants to give you a new opportunity, say, no, God is okay. I, I need to... You go to a restaurant, you, 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 someone is paying the bill. You're already embarrassing yourself. How much is everything? What is your business? Stay the person took you. These are mindsets that disgrace us in public places. You are well dressed. You kept quiet. Nobody knew. When they say, you just say, How, are you the one paying for it? Or some of you, because you have never been there, when you get there, you do crazy things. They say, okay, pick this. Say, hey, let me take it now. Because I don't know where. Give me this. Uh, puff, puff, ice cream. Give me this. This cake. Is it for birthday or just normal days? Bring it. You reveal your mindset when opportunities give room. That's why many people limit themselves. Some people go for a job interview. As soon as you enter, you don't greet anybody. You just go to the seat and sit down. You say, I got first class. They just tell you, get up and walk out of this place. They will never give you that job. Doesn't matter who prayed for you. Bad manners, you just step in and enter and just sit down. And you're looking at everybody. 
say how are you you say hi hi you are looking for a job you think that's how the people got that job they ask you a question see let me tell you if that god will help us this night oh say amen. amen you entered the job this in you saw that it was your uncle they say ah oh, uncle yeah god help you they are doing an interview for you mindsets mindsets See, this is why some people never step into some levels of grace and lifting and power. They never become leaders. They remain servants forever. That's the mindset in Africa. You see Nigerians on CNN or BBC and see what many of them do. Hallelujah. We spend money and pay their flight. They take from the national treasury. And you, when it's time for them to speak, Look at the ambassadors of many countries articulating themselves very well. When it gets to the point of Nigerians, they take personal issues that is not the business of the world and start venting. Listen to them on radio everywhere. Mindsets. Preachers, mindsets. They name their sermons after their annoyance. I am coming back this time around for you. What is that? You just know that he's fighting with someone. It's not the oil, but the hand that holds the oil that matters. Let me tell you something. A mindset can limit you. You can never rise above and beyond the level of your mindset. Make sure as you are laughing, you are taking it seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God began to open my mind about my mindset, I found out that if I don't change my mindset, my life will never change. And I began a radical project to change my mind. Because as innocent and loving as my parents were, some of their mindsets were not consistent with God's word. Are you listening to me? And I knew that I have to change it. There are many of you who are waiting right now for your father or mother to die. You have been eyeing the house. You see people fighting. They are fighting over their grandfather's land. They should be ashamed of themselves. They say when he left it, was this not where he put the mark? From that time till now, you've not been productive to rise up and do everything. You are even gathering your children and say, when you see uncle so, 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 hate him for the rest of your life because that land is our own. What did I say? The children say, it's our own. They stand up with that mindset. They go around to school, say it's our land. You see why I sang that song? What's the song again? I can go back to the way. What is the it? What is the it? The mindset. It used to be terrible. So you are, you are making a vow that I won't go back. I've seen a higher light. I've seen a better life. That you can be prosperous and make heaven. That you can be a millionaire and make heaven. That you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and still be prosperous. That you can shake your generation and bless people. That, from, that you can write the books that are in your heart. I study a lot about great people. Have a lot of their documentaries. Hallelujah. And I'm touched at how they spoke to themselves talk about the man nelson mandela great man had a dream in his heart and he said he was going to change the course of south africa and 20 years in prison did not stop him right now even on their currencies his face that is there almost every note i think every note now many people clap and we use him as a case study 
he changed his mindset jesus was born in nazareth and the bible says can anything good come out of nazareth jesus said no my vision is beyond this place i refuse to be confined do you know that many of you seated here if you will tap one third of the grace that god has put in your life your generation will not recover from what you have but you've been hearing all kinds of voices that have been speaking to you every time you look at oprah winfrey you just imagine yourself but now with the perspective of the kingdom and your mindset just punishes you and said you better hibernate i think you need some rest you think people just grow and become tv hosts hallelujah do you know how bad a mindset is a mindset can be so bad to the extent that if someone comments you you can think is the person is intimidating you or the person is insulting you they just say ah you speak very well though. you go back and ask 10 people and say if somebody is angry with you how should the person respond mindsets many of us have had different mindsets when our parents are angry they have names they call us stupid boy say sir so you have grown with that mindset and now every time you want to move forward that thing replace see you can change the future but you cannot change history the mind has a memory bank it keeps records of all the days when you could not do certain things and when god begins to speak to you and say look i can take you to a higher place do you believe it one of the greatest gifts a man can have is self-confidence i don't mean arrogance self-confidence some of you have refused to learn how to drive till today till tomorrow not because a car is not available you believe the day you get on the road you are going to kill somebody and yet you see this these outside boys small boy of nine years ten years you know when they park the car in pz the masters will be resting the boys are so confident they don't ever imagine accident that's how they learn no no driver's license no nothing confidence many of you lose confidence you have a presentation you you are the best student you have the best work but you are fidgeting come and lead prayer you who prays very well now you are praying and oh father in the name of jesus you find yourself saying things you shouldn't say you didn't even know you have ended the prayer because of pressure all kinds of things but when the holy spirit begins to walk on you listen to me the first thing is he exposes the flaw in your mindset the greatest deceit that can happen to any man in the earth is to believe your mindset is okay the way it is every time i interact with god's word i look at myself sometimes i just look at myself at the mirror i say joshua change for god's sake and then i slap my head and i laugh back again but i'm just these are just efforts to say you need change I read some of them his book multiply your success lead powerful leadership book there are many of you that what you are seeing here and i and all of these things god is already every time you sit here god is telling you do 10 times more than what you are seeing you say god me when will you stop that mindset of inferiority and complex are you listening to me that mindset of unworthiness and false humility and embrace what god has said about you there are ladies in this place you believe that if you get married it's a miracle in fact the wedding should be called thanksgiving not not wedding solemnization you just have some nasty negative things about yourself the other ladies their hands are soft and tush but our hands the testimony of hard work mindsets mindsets hallelujah mindsets there are some of us the first day they give you fork and spoon and knife you sit down and be laughing at yourself for a long time it's not like you cannot use it is it excitement or pressure you are just you don't even know what to do say i deserve a good life say it africa this is the gift africa gave us 
we grew up and met mindsets that will never tell us we can arise never the day you took first you went to your father and said daddy i took first he said eh? what did you work for what did i pay your school fees for give me chance Jerry, as the mechanic come and you are wondering you are saying somebody who took 10th position they caught chicken for the person your neighbor and you took first and they trivialize it and you say okay according to my mindset first is the same as 14th position the next next time you get 20th position and your father says i always knew he said it doesn't make any difference some of us grew up with that mindset and so excellence lives your life permanently you don't value it you don't respect it get up and throw clothes on your on your bed and leave it there say sure i'm going to marry one day mindsets so two couples get married are you let me use somebody come my dear Are you ready to accept this lady as your lovely way? You didn't even listen. You just nodded. Yes. You and God. Yes. Two of you go to the house. Clash of heterogeneous mindsets. Coming from several places. In our world, my father treats me like a queen. The other guy in our world, I'm the king. Clash of values. When I'm pregnant, will you cook for me? Am I crazy? Will I cook for you? Men don't go to our kitchen in our, in our culture mindsets you see why it's good to stay with the word of god he said do not be conformed to this age but be what transform what does a transformer do say it what does a transformer do changes things god bless you my dear mindsets because the way many of us are going our mindset will lead to a fatal accident in life you are praying in tongues you are moving but your mindset is taking you back your mindset is taking to the extent do you know that well you can ask shakes and bishop by god's grace we have prayed for thousands of people in tongues and have found out that 90 percent of people who have challenges receiving the baptism of the holy spirit at that spot are people who were challenged with their mindsets when they begin to speak they turn aside and they are looking they feel like I'm such a villager. I cannot even articulate myself. Now you are saying I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did I really receive it? Or the one I received came from somewhere? They say, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a great destiny. Immediately you turn, you just see your village. You don't see another neighbor. And you remember. What about the farm? What about the tractor there? What about this? And God is telling you, you will rise from that level. Some of us, where we come from, maybe it's even a hut that you are staying, a real hut. So what? Say after me, so what? So you get angry. Your dad is a carpenter. You just see one guy pass, you say, that's my, my father's younger brother. All these people, they tell them, work hard, they will work hard. Have you seen people like that? Denying their father and mother. Their mother sells Akara. And they come, they say, who is that? They say, well, they say mommy, mommy. They mention one name. They say, it's just the name we call her. That's the express revelation of complex. You need a retreat. Quick. Quick. Whatever you are doing, stop. And go for a retreat. We are not proud of ourselves. See, this is what makes a lot of guys. They come to meet a lady and they come and they are telling her stories. Say to sin. Um... My father just dropped one jeep. Who asked you? Who asked you? See, and the other day, self, I was even wondering, uh, you care for anything? He doesn't have money. Pressure. Pressure. He begged for someone's phone and told the guy to call him when he's with this lady. See, I deliver you from that mindset in this place in Jesus' name. There are many ladies who cannot go and see their boyfriend or whatever. They say, please give me this phone. Please give me your shoe. Please work with what you have covetousness a product of mindset you can't see anything good and leave it quietly hallelujah mindsets do not be conformed to this age 
there are many of us who have adopted wrong mindsets of success right now you're already imagining if i become like pastor jakes my own zue around not sit at the back she'll be standing holding the water when i want to drink i'll just shift my mouth like this and she'll put that's your mindset and as crazy as what i'm saying is there are people today who are doing it they do it with honor and dignity there are pastors today that if their members see them anywhere they will kneel down and have to greet them and then he stands you are embarrassing yourself because that's a mind by the time you rise to a higher level you You want to write a book you say you want it to be a bestseller you go and meet somebody in community market and say can you produce this book for me is it going to be a bestseller that way you are used to photocopying handouts small books god is saying write something that will take nations are you getting blessed tonight we are going to pray see the point of my message tonight is to reveal to you that your mindset has been keeping you where you are as a ministry we are where we are today because of our mindset if we rise higher we'll move higher hallelujah you see a lot of people 10 years 20 years five members 10 members they keep giving all kinds of flimsy excuses good preachers but bad leaders they won't read about leadership they won't read about all of these things they will increase they won't go anywhere you will remain at the level you are until light comes to pick you out of there he said arise and shine why for your light new knowledge i promise you you will remain at any level you are in life until light if you are ready to disengage your former mindset and pick up something new you can rise from that level hallelujah god is telling you you can be a tv host and you sit down and say, I can't speak English. How many months does it take to learn sound English? I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. The way you grew up, you cannot remain like that. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence. Every time I look at myself, I see a great leader. I see a visionary leader. I have such a healthy perspective of my life. I admire people, but not enough to intimidate myself. Because I have stayed long enough in the secret place to know the things that he has put in me. And I know they will open any door. Many of you are trying to be like people who will one day admire you in the future. Did you know that I, had, I wanted to be like many people who want to be like me today? Because I did not know what I carried. And so we have all kinds of models on TV. Rihanna who again and you look at them and you smile you imagine yourself in their place wrong models and you begin to follow their own path and you end up in destruction I told myself I will not die the way I was born I was born quietly only my mother and a few visitors i wouldn't die that way jesus was born in a manger when he was going back to heaven there was a crowd celebrating him let me tell you something you can choose to rise beyond your level there are many of us abu has limited you carryover has limited you your class of degree has limited you you think you may never rise beyond that level You must believe in yourself. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you right now. You must believe in yourself. Believe that you can become anything. The only limitation in my life is the voice of the Holy Spirit. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing I cannot become. Nothing. 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 
I remember when we were going to have our crusade in 2006. We are organizing it. You are going to a local government. Young. Just smiling. All we had was faith. But we knew we were going to do it. They limited God many of you have limited god every time you look at the frustration of your family members god tells you you are the savior you will arise but every time god speaks it another voice another voice starts speaking to you and many of us have yielded to those voices oh i believe in myself i have a great life i'm telling you i'm telling you the best that god has for me is my heritage in christ I believe I will write books that will shake this generation. Yeah, I believe it. Listen, we said this thing, sir, right from those days. We'll pray and say we know it, that God will do it. That's why I tell some of you, make faith proclamations. Whenever you say I'm great, you just look. You say I even trekked from campus to come. So what? So what? There is nothing you are going through today that somebody did not go through and conquered it. Some of you have not eaten anything. You came for koinonia hungry. It's not because restaurants closed today. It's because you didn't have money. Let me tell you something. That is not enough to give you a mindset that you are a failure. Every time you go to your mother or your father, they call you and say, my son, my daughter. It's not like I don't love you. You know if I had more, I would have given. If I were you, I would go back and say, Lord, Take me out of this mindset. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me a world changer. And let my parents have a foretaste. The man called Pan and Pasi Paul was living in my auntie's boys quarters. Used to stay in my auntie's boys quarters. When he started this kind of music, they kicked him out of many churches in Joss. But today, when you enter his office, you see awards that you cannot imagine. hallelujah so the first point tonight is refuse to remain where you are this is why we teach the things we are teaching you must know that you are a leader you won't be a follower forever say i will not be a follower forever say it you cannot remain a follower forever you cannot remain in a rented house forever you grew up there you saw them humiliating your father and your mother you are not doing anything about it god is speaking to you tonight he said i'm a lady but nobody has come to marry me that's a mindset that needs to leave you because you believe that your life is tied around a man hallelujah there are many guys here you are just waiting to graduate some of you got your service this today. You are happy. Not because they give awards in service place. But because of how much is the Yalawi? 18.5. And you are smiling. In your world, that's prosperity. Say, I never had it that good. Leave me. Let me enjoy it. Your lecturer looks at you. And says i brought your test and i look you are a dull student i've always known pretty lady dull head and you carry that mindset you define yourself i refuse any report that is not the word of god whatever my father did not have i will give it to them whatever my mother did not have i will give it to them i told my mother this i told her you relax since i'm already alive i'm walking you just get ready to smile every day of your life the remaining part of your life will be years of laughter john the baptist was called a son of consolation many of you the way you are going you see someone 35 years your parents are still helping you 35 years pop season and someone you are 35 years no pressure Will you marry? I'll think about it. What are you doing in your life? That lad, nobody should leave me alone. I'm not a small child. And every time they put small food, say, I'm not a small child. So you know. 
back out. Back out of your father's house. No sense of responsibility. You are not paying any bills. You are not doing anything. The little money you get, you go and play football. You come back in the evening. Throw your boots everywhere. What kind of life is this? And you went to school. You read. You graduated. But your mindset has betrayed you. And everything people just say is somebody in your village. Calm down. Before you finish calling the names of innocent people in your village. Find out how. See, there are many ministries claiming blessings. Oh, we are working in millions. Ask them, do you have an account? Do you have an account? They say no. Whose account will you use? Say, well, uh, when it comes, we will be able to arrange ourselves. Let me tell you something. It will end in those loud noise in the mic. You are not pre The Bible says, go and borrow vessels. If you truly believe that new oil is coming, borrow vessels. It didn't say borrow oil. It said borrow vessels. hallelujah three ways to transform your mind right quickly number one ah oh, the lord is challenging people tonight right number one generally speaking all right this is just generally speaking you need a new orientation whenever you find out that you have a faulty mindset the bible says you cannot put new wine in what an old wine skin you need both a new wine and a new wine skin you want to transform your mind number one realize that your present mindset is not its best realize it come to terms with it i don't care if your father is a billionaire it's your father's money it's not your money i don't care if you're a five pointer or you're a one pointer I don't care if you are working in a bank or you are working in an oil company. Listen to me. There is more in your life. You cannot remain this way. I've always known that there's more in my life. Some of you are here and all that is in your world is you are local champions here in Zaria. The best student in your class. And you think that's how the world will treat you everywhere. You step out and find out a rude shock. When I was in secondary school, we used to win every debate we go to. We didn't know that it was just that our standard was low. I was saying we are very smart people. One day we tried one school. I won't mention the name. Ah! We tried one school. What they did for us that day. I was one of the speakers. We embarrassed ourselves that day hated our school that day hated the principal and everybody i just looked at them i wished i wasn't in that school because we're local champions in our little local government where we were hallelujah the first day i tried jam mathematics after five hours i got four only four i said this is serious serious i was the best student in my class i said this is serious a mindset kept me believing that i'm a superstar now jam brought their question i didn't do for damas so i knew that this is not child's play immediately i recognized the need hallelujah i started organizing lessons for my classmates a rescue mission quick because I told them, look, let me tell you, we'll write Waek and Bishop. Because of that, I started challenging myself. I tried GC. I did very well. And when I looked, I said, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I was a laboratory prefect. I wouldn't go out. Oh. I locked myself in the lab there. Because I didn't know more. So I thought all that there was was intellect. But I sat down there. The other best student. In my school then, the smartest student got lab and library, not head boy. Head boy was for talkatives. If you were smart and they wanted you to have a good result, 
you become the library prefect or the lab prefect so that you can sit there in one place I made up my mind not to be small I started reading further maths on my own 60% of my chemistry I learned it by myself see I didn't do the kind of your school in our own school we the ones building the school as students when you misbehave you just go and change oh yeah change and go and serve job some of you were you went to schools where you already laptop did we ever have a laptop we had to borrow Whitstone bridge for work yet i i told myself i said this will not define my life i'm going far are you listening to me many of you have kept yourself in positions giving flimsy excuses I told myself one day my world will celebrate me number one go for knowledge buy the truth please write buy the truth read books that will mold your character read books that will teach you leadership read books on fatherhood read books on ministry this is why we are putting together a school of ministry the school of ministry is not for pastors the school of ministry is to raise ambassadors in all spheres hallelujah raise ambassadors go for knowledge look at me many of you have some of you apart from your grammar english grammar that you read you've never sat down to read any book and finish it you look at a book five thousand naira is over my dead body five thousand abba what will five thousand do i can buy beans i can buy one tier of 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 gary and mix all this in. that's why it's only my mother who says only your stomach that will be coming out your destiny will remain where it is because that's the only thing you are feeding guard your heart guard your heart some of you god has told you you'll be a leader over many what books have you read about leadership you don't know anything about leadership so you are doing traditional leadership in your faculty because that's all you know that's what you saw the king <laughs> the king of your village do now you have become a president and you are you just imagine the members of the cabinet those people that are carry koboko and follow king and you begin to treat people because that's what you know when life puts pressure on you you reveal your mindset many of you lack character you lack communication skills you wake up in the morning you cannot greet your roommate to say good morning say am i a child they gave that to me 5th of october 1975 you they gave that to you 6th of october am i not older you see mindset mindset you eat food and ask the person carry the plate mindset what when, will, when has it given anybody food and you are bold to say it when people come you say this is my younger brother must you tell us are we blind forget the fact that he's bigger than me he's my young calm down mindsets You'll never be a leader with this mindset. You may be a good tongue talker. You may be a good miracle worker. But you cannot take your world this way. Because the world you are going to take are not born again. It takes more than just praying in tongues to take your world. Are you listening to me? There must be a level. I was reading an article by Jimo Ibrahim. He just celebrated his 46th birthday and I was so touched. I was just reading about his history. Jimo Ibrahim. Some of you don't even know who is. Who is Jimo Ibrahim? You are in Nigeria here. The only thing you know is, is what's, which is the latest soup opera now. They don't do it again. Paloma, second chance. That's all you know. That's why you are behaving like what you have been watching. But tonight I'm challenging you. Say after me, I go for knowledge. Because see, when you begin to the bible says look for it says jesus took the book 
and he saw where it was written by prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He found in the volume of the books where it was written. You can find your destiny when you go for knowledge. The first book I began to read when I made up my mind to walk in destiny was Discovering Your Potentials. Dr. Miles Monroe. I will never forget what that book did for me. Understanding Your Potentials. I didn't even know there was something called potentials. And I said, alright, this is it. This is it. I will begin a journey. Read books on leadership. You are always fighting with your sister at home. It's a sign that you are going to beat up your wife. Get a book on fatherhood quick. Quick! Every small child you see, you say, me, I hate children. Ah, that's a revelation that you need to read something. Go to Sunday school books. CEM. Read something. Read scriptures about Jesus relating with children. Receive that impartation. Some of you are about to write your exams. Once again, the mindset that brought you, I patched three C's, added two more, and I came to this school. And now God is telling you this semester you will have the best of results. And you laugh. You say, Where are them? Uh, where are them? So, 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 so. As if their success will stop your own. I believe in myself. I know that God can take me anywhere. Do you believe this about yourself? Hallelujah. I will never be small in life. No. Never. I will do great things for the kingdom. This is why I like Christ, Christ Embassy. Oh, they give you a mindset of a champion. They give you a mindset of a warrior. They, they shape a mindset that refuses failure totally. I refuse to be a failure in life. I refuse it. I refuse the limitations of my lineage. Whoever has looked at your family and said, can anything good come? You hold on and see. You are a miracle on your way to happen. Are you listening to me? Everyone. God has given you a music ministry. Every time you look at these great people, who told you you cannot become like one of them? Every man in the earth today was born. He was a baby in the hands of someone. A mindset took him to where he is. They asked Jim or Ibrahim, they said, what is the secret of your blessings? And he said, number one, the grace of God. He said, number two, knowledge. He said, sometimes I look at Nigerians, if they know what I know, they will live where they are instantly. Do you know that's true? The same way you can grow in knowledge and mindset and change different things. Look at what God is doing by the grace of God. The organization, the leaders and the rest. You think this is guesswork? This is not just prayer. Many of you want great leadership. You want a great business, great company, great this. You have the name, but you've not read any book. If you like, go and register the name. You will remain a broke failure in life. Broke failure. Until the mindset of God takes you out of that level. Hallelujah. The people from my place drink. They drink a lot. I told myself that mindset, I'll kick it out of my life. I will never be associated with the evil that comes from my territory are you listening to me there are some of you your your clans or villages are associated with different kinds of things temper lust immorality demonic practices irresponsibility will you take this as a mindset and say it happens to everybody is it my fault that i was born from so so place hallelujah one day your father looked at you and said sorry i cannot pay your school fees and you had to fend for yourself are you going to allow your children to think like that many of you are shallow minded you're not thinking five years from now you're not thinking 10 years from now let me and i'm speaking to the guys most especially you are just growing old and, and, and growing beard on your face you are not adding anything to your head per day i never sleep any day until i add new knowledge to myself never my eyes does not see sleep until i add something the more you have knowledge, you will be in command in life. Look at the Chinese, North Korea. 
The whole hands, their hands is like from here to here. Short people. But they are ruling the world because it's not about their size. It's about their intellectual capacity. Many of you need to begin to buy books. Is Oga Jordan around? He didn't come. Oga Jordan. Where is he? He's outside. Jordan bookstore is there. See, it's better for you to buy one trouser, 250, 250 naira on the floor. They may laugh at you, but not for long. I assure you, it won't be for long. Show me a man who will pay the price to change his mindset. You are in partnership with God for a victorious life. You won't die a failure. It may take a while. Hallelujah. Do you believe this about yourself? When God called me, I believed. I have never sat down to think, Kai, am I too small? Am I? No, I don't think all those kinds of satanic thoughts. Because I found in Philippians chapter 2 verse 8, it said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, I can go anywhere, I can do anything. If God tells me to build a 10-story building for Koinonia, off I go. Off I go. You will be saying it won't happen. You will just find out that will give you a letter for the dedication. Confidence. Kabbalah, but I know whom I have believed. See, I want you to be confident about your life. If you are not confident about your life, you will need someone else to keep endorsing you. There are many of you that will never be satisfied. You do a nice hair. You know it's nice. You need 10 people to tell you it's nice before you believe. What kind of life is that? Stop trying to prove points. And settle down. Go for knowledge. Say, I contend for knowledge. Say it. Yes, you may stay in the house. You fetch water from the stream. You are still doing it right now. Fetch the water from the stream. But carry your Bible and carry the book. Say, Lord, one day I will have I will have borehold and I'll build boreholes in my village. Hallelujah. You eat once a week, no problem. In the midst of your pain, just tell yourself, I'm changing my mind, I'm changing my life. I told myself this thing long ago. Hallelujah. I believe in ear and I. I believe in where God is taking us. That's why all the things that are happening today, it's not a shock. We are just grateful. Never a shock. Not at once. See, listen. It's not happening because of Joshua Selman. It's happening because of a mindset. I assure you, if you have it, you will rise. Whether you are on jeans or you are, it's about your mindset. Are you listening to me? Some of you, God is speaking to you about bakeries. You have passion for bread, but you are sitting down. You are saying, bakery, I went to school. Sit down there. The day someone who will... Pe See, prophecies are like rain. Whoever brings a container will receive with it and will run. You sit down there and be delaying. You will watch someone run with your vision and accomplish it. I believe that by the grace of God, one day, we will own our television station debt free we won't stand on air telling anybody please bring 35 dollars and five cents no because god has given us the law of prosperity it's a matter of time gentiles will come from a day will come it will be a privilege to partner with us oh it will happen do you believe this about your life i believe a day will come when i will not even be allowed to buy anything with my money because people we have changed will be too grateful too grateful they'll make my daughter head girl by force just as a way of it's my mind it's my mind one day my child will say daddy can i have this in the freezer i say go on i didn't enjoy it have it what will your child say the day he calls you daddy will he say daddy i have something that i want to discuss with you why are we like this change your mindset 
you have received a wrong mindset many of us do not like what we receive from our parents but you are already becoming what you hate because you are not doing anything about your mindset exactly what you hate you are already becoming it i refuse to remain the way i am i contend for knowledge i won't behave like a nigerian i'll behave like a citizen of the what is the need for me that's the language of nigerians chop i chop you can never help somebody and go quietly what is the need for me wrong mindsets we got from nigeria many of you are adopting it you like it someone says do you have the number of somebody yes i have send me 200 naira recharge card you would think you are joking but now you are used to it but i deliver you from that mindset tonight tonight we are going to be praying so number one go for knowledge number two consistently speak the word of god consistently speak the word of god speak the word of god speak the word of god the word of god comes with power the word of god comes with hope hallelujah i was talking with the protocol team yesterday and i was telling them a day will come who we'll have bosses bosses e s s s s s s s s bosses that we can give a way to help many people look at today by the grace of god we are going to shika tomorrow and sunday hallelujah and we're not even thinking about the budget oh well we do this the grace of god we are going to now start becoming a blessing to others you if you do not believe do you know many people will suffer because of your mindset you can be a blessing to the world i refuse to be where i will not remain in this state next month i should have left this realm of reality to a higher one i learned this from samadayami oh i have certain people who have mentored my mind some of you sit down there god is telling you listen to samadayami and matu ashimolo to understand success principles your pastor is there with his mindset telling you don't listen to anybody again he's a broke failure it's just that he's called he's sitting there and he's educating you in your little world and you will not break boundaries and see what god is doing internationally Was this message preached by my pastor? No, I won't listen to it. And you remain there. Hallelujah. You see an elderly woman speaking wisdom about family life. You won't humble yourself and listen. You say, I'm a pastor in my church. You are fumbling, fumbling in life and you won't calm down and listen. Are you learning something, please? See, you must begin a project and tell yourself you are changing your mindset i'm changing it i'm changing it hallelujah when tosin was the former treasurer she surprised me when we just started koinonia listen when we just started koinonia this offering bags that we have was a personal donation we just started and she made at least 400 and she began to tell me she said josh i think we need to start preparing for a counting machine counting machine she said because i see increase coming what's your thought like your many parents didn't plan they put one small house with one garage they never planned for increase that's how many of you are thinking my little life my house one room all the children will stay me and my wife will stay an extra room where we are fighting she will stay there that's your mindset listen say after me i break free everybody inside and outside i break free from the mindset that came from my village that is associated with my lineage tonight i break free in the name of jesus i declare 
that I rise above cultural limitations. I rise above the limitations in Africa. The world will hear my voice. I'm the head and not the tail. I have books to write. I have lives to change. I'm a leader. Yes. That's how you speak. And then you behave like one. You start composing yourself like one. No misbehavior. Iron your shirt. Dress smart. If you are barbing, bab well. Don't bab as if they took light and, and, and you ran out. Be smart. It doesn't matter what you have. Your notebooks that you are right. Be smart. When you get up in the morning, dress your bed. Keep your room clean. You are behaving like your, your future. Many of us are still behaving like our past. God gave you a bed. You are still remembering the days of the mat. You don't need to repair mat. You just stand up and leave your bed sheet. White bed sheet, it has turned to brown. Visitors come and say, have seat, please. Dirty bed sheet like that. You are not going far with that mindset. And some of you are ladies. You won't go far. Forget about all these things. Walk on yourself this night. Hallelujah. You want to be a leader. You cannot sit down. The day 5,000 enters your body, you are, you are shaking. You must see that you must spend everything. You withdraw it and just put it in your pocket. You are not using it, but you are just happy. You are just walking around filled with anxiety. What kind of life is that? See, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. But God is speaking to someone. Enough is enough. Are you going to continue where your parents stopped? Or you are going to rise? God gave you a job. You are not doing your best now. They ask you why. You say because I'm collecting 10,000. Bible says he who is faithful in little. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I break free from mindsets. I want to teach you four things very quickly. Right. I taught it some years ago. To help us conduct ourselves very well and behave like leaders i want to teach you four very important words number one please write it p-l-e-a-s-e -E, please write it quick and look at me please because we're going to pray we're out of time look at me many of you this is the singular word that has cheated you from your destiny you can never say please Carry this thing and give me. Please. Everybody say after me, please. Did he kill you? Say it again, please. Learn it. This is why many of you were not voting. They, they didn't make you the president in your family. Never become it. Because you cannot be cautious. Let me tell you something. When you tell people, please, it's a sign of value on them that you respect them that you honor them the highest psychological need of any man is to feel valued and to feel important please can you help me please can you do this please tell him i may not make it please learn it this singular word has made people millionaires and has made others broke and they will continue remaining where they are as failures please Please, I may not be free now. Please, I may not. Hello, hello, hello. Call me, call me. Call me, I don't have credit. Thank you. You are praying in tongues. I assure you, you won't be a leader. If I am the person, I'm, I'm doing interview for your employment, I guarantee you, I will employ you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You may be attending Koinonia, I will employ you. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. Please. Please. I give me cold water my chest this food is hot give me cold water is it your own you came to someone's house they are treated please everybody say after me please learn to say please i'm teaching you how to be a leader learn to say please some of you you only say it when you are in trouble please many of you guys 
if only you told the lady please she would have said yes you carried your mouth and just came tongue talking but no manners grace but no character I want to talk to you I am saying I want to talk to you you are going come now is he your younger sister and then during the relationship program say there are some people here when we tell them to come they won't come why will they come why it takes a lot of humility and it reveals a sense of maturity and courtesy when you tell people please one more time say please say it please number two i'm sorry i'm sorry has made two nations to go for war one demanded a public apology the other one said over my dead body says all right we'll kill ourselves over our dead bodies i'm sorry listen when you say i'm sorry it's not a sign of weakness is a sign of tremendous strength many husbands have fought with their wives because they cannot say i'm sorry pastors are fighting one another they cannot say i'm sorry hallelujah politicians are fighting themselves they cannot say i'm sorry you called me a pastor instead of a reverend just say i'm sorry say uh -huh. Uh -huh. i'm sorry i'm sorry ah why didn't you i'm sorry see sometimes you must not be the one at fault to say i'm sorry sometimes you just need to say it and let it be there is a saying in my language that if because you are holding bone flies are disturbing your mouth throw the bone and let the flies go with it nice proverb not dull proverbs that don't have meaning very nice proverb hallelujah everybody say i'm sorry I, you didn't do anything but just say it you are learning say i'm sorry now turn to your neighbor and say i'm sorry some of you to sting your ego that's the mindset i want to go out say do it again i'm sorry from today listen now that i have access to you i must teach you and you must learn it by force tomorrow will not be able to say it pastor to members whatever i'm sorry when you hurt people tell them you are sorry i'm sorry sometimes you may do it unconsciously whenever you are aware i'm sorry mean it from your heart not this kind of wicked i'm sorry that is even more painful it's better to keep quiet they say two of you apologize i'm sorry is that a problem see two couples who call for counseling okay it's okay it's okay say i'm sorry I'm sorry. Say, darling, I'm darling, I'm sorry. You know that this, this, this is not, they are not even ready for reconciliation. But the Bible says God has given us what? The ministry of reconciliation. Everybody say after me, I'm sorry. You must learn it. People hurt you every day and you are hurting others as much as they are hurting you. So you must get set with, I'm sorry. You will use it many times in your life. Are you learning something this night? Is something changing in your mind many of you after this grace you just need to call you are broken you are suffering because you didn't tell your father i'm sorry they would have sent you money since january you have not received your allowance now is march only that day i'm sorry i shouted at you that day i'm sorry and monday you will get an alert but you are sitting here you are dying your father is enjoying you are suffering please after this go and take your phone or break your pride and help yourself exam is coming next week I'm sorry number three thank you thank you look up look up do you know thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity in the realm of the spirit are you listening to me when you thank someone for what he has done he will reproduce it hallelujah thank you if someone does something good to you 20 times say thank you 20 times 20 times don't say i said it one i said it one 20 times thank you 
Say after me, thank you. An expression of gratitude. An expression of compliment. See, these are the things that make people to love being around certain atmospheres. Some of you now see the reason why you don't have any friend. You are your only friend. Your environment is, is acidic. It chokes everyone that comes around you. Thank you. Someone buys you a present. Someone says, ah, um, you were supposed to iron your shirt. I just ironed it for you because I thought you'd be praying. You say, eh, eh. That's exactly what you do to your wife. She just cooks. I said, darling, nice meal. He said, mm -hmm. I'm reading newspaper. Thank you does not kill. Thank you. Everybody say after me, thank you. You go for an interview. Please, may I sit? Yes, you sit down. When you finish the interview, you say thank you. You are talking in a meeting. Whether business meeting or leadership meeting. They say, alright, you speak. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. This is what I have to say. Ah, people will be looking at you. They'll say, now we need a chairman for this. But before they say anything, they say you are the one. You see the reason why many people pray in tongues they pour gallons of oil on them but they remain where they are because their mindsets betray them you got first class but you don't have manners no character wrong mindset and you are not walking till today hallelujah everybody say after me thank you you must cultivate it tell people thank you someone adjust your seat someone held you thank you thank you don't say if I speak too much, I'll become cheap. Say mindset. Where did you get it from? Finally, God bless you. Oh, you must learn to bless people. When I taught it four years ago, I added one, I love you. But our society has become so bad. You tell someone I love you, say you mean it. Instead of him to say thank you. Say ah! Why did you say this now? So let's stop at God bless you. <laughs> we say I love you when we're in Koinonia here. Or you go and tell your classmate tomorrow. First you say, my God, this is unbelievable. Ah. Say after me, God bless you. In Jewish days, if you curse your son, they will, they will stone you to death they blessed their children even the lord spoke in numbers to aaron and said in this manner you shall bless the people now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace it was a benediction of blessing that was given to the people every time Many of you don't bless people. They come to you, they go back scattered and battered. There must be words of love. See, just these things I've taught you, I assure you, is enough to make you an extraordinary leader. Let's review it very quickly. We are praying. Number one. You, you see, you cannot remember. Number one. Say it. See, some of us are feeling like big boys and big girls. You see, this is the this is the mindset when you say please you are feeling kind like this thing where you are making us become like children are you mature the way you are behaving number two number three number four don't never forget this begin to use it immediately begin to use it immediately it will work like magic for you See, many of you are already feeling a healthy esteem about yourself because you're announcing that, ah, so I'm having some secrets now. I'll go and try it. Let me tell you, it will open some doors for you beyond your imagination. Please, use it for your roommate and see the way they will love you. Second Timothy 2 verse 2. Everyone, please read. One to read. Of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what? 
teach others also so what i had i commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of christ and they call mentorship so wrong a mentor is not just one that you submit to it's not just one that you admire a mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of christ all in the name of mentorship and many people never get blessed you do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing hallelujah a mentor is not just a person you submit to it's not just a person you admire oh i admire this person and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of god in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um, principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay i've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junks they say i need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it is someone getting blessed tonight very important let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us oh thank you jesus someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of jesus christ a mentor is a shortcut to your future mentorship is shortcut to your future experience is the slowest way to learn experience is the slowest way to learn in life if you think everything you are going to get in life there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man you don't have any man's books you are reading there are no tips i share the holy spirit for myself experience is the slowest way to achieve it's like going to lagos by trekking you will arrive but you may arrive dead hallelujah a mentor is your coach he tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong a mentor is not your friend a mentor is not your confidant you see where a lot of people miss it please you neglect this principle i'm sharing just know that you have signed an agreement with failure guaranteed a mentor is not your best friend your best friend loves you the way you are hallelujah but a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are this is the difference between a mentor and your best friend your best friend loves you you will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say it's all right all things work together for them that love god who are the called because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things 
so your friend you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and i want to correct her. i say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem god you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now hmm. help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you i want to say something that will bless you right now correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working your superior is god's protection to you from your next tragedy are you getting my point when when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you it is god using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make he said my son pay attention don't just hear there is a difference between hearing and listening hearing is just sound listening is hearing with the intention of obedience that's the difference between listening and hearing there are many people who hear all kinds of things i have been more blessed from the men of god and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries they are there walking they keep hearing but they never listen is god challenging someone tonight Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen please make sure you are writing in one hour brothers and sisters look at me in one hour i can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it i wrote a letter to mike Mo uh, miles munro and i told him i've been blessed by your ministry may god bless and honor you and he replied me he said may god bless you use the book i got that book i paid so much when it came into the country i made sure i was one of the first people that got it and i sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit but within one day you can get wisdom from the pain of a man is somebody getting blessed do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right Is someone getting blessed in this place? Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus Christ. A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important as far as the kingdom is concerned. Very, very important. Listen, I want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life. There is an attitude. Hallelujah. This is where a lot of people are missing it. Please listen. I wrote it down here and let me just read it. I said to be blessed from a mentor's life, you must receive the person of that man of God. Not just the message, the person. I see a lot of people who say forget about the person. Just receive the message and leave him. That's junk and nonsense. Are you getting my point? You must first receive the person of that man of God. I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The law does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benny Hinn shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benny Hinn and i had the people just shouting and they were saying i'm disappointed in benny Hinn. imagine how can a great man and i just kept quiet i was listening to them We were watching a program and they were just talking tearing this man down say this generation self now what is happening you don't even trust anybody again and i listened to them and later on i called the person i said how could you be this unwise hallelujah over an information you do not even understand you are not benny Hinn's pa you don't know anything it's easy to sit down and discuss about people isn't it it's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you did score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just had it, is easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge. Idahosa said, never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once. And I listened to them. And I called the person. I said, no, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, you need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry.
hallelujah you must receive the person of that man of god number two you must trust his voice you must trust that his voice represents the voice of god in your life please listen to this i'm not teaching you error nobody obeyed instructions from a man of god in scripture and went to perdition if he's a true man of god you must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from god listen you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say i've had you sir let me go and think about it that's nonsense read your scriptures if you trust that the voice of this man of god is the voice of god you prove it by absolute loyalty this looks very childish but i will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet i was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my meal. kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment Praise the Lord. Is someone listening? It is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man, then his message, his grace, and his anointing will be effective in your life. It's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike Murdoch, and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man I said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of my Bulldog's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself thank you jesus christ mentorship creates seven things and let me just put it like i said we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry number one it creates impartation number two it creates guidance number three it creates access it creates impartation it creates guidance it creates access number four it creates endorsement number five it creates promotion or a platform for promotion Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I will mention their names. 
and with my zeal I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said my son you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go God is going to use you greatly never criticize a man of God you are too young to know everything around a man of God's life make sure from today and I said mommy God is my witness and in your presence this is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name I would challenge wrong doctrines but not to talk about a man of God wisdom I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia. One day now, I will make a foolish decision, maybe on air. Are you seeing that now? This is how great people, I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship. There are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing. There are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing. Levels of wisdom hallelujah i learned silence from one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet i didn't used to be like that especially if god has revealed to me what what your problem is before you talk i say please save save us the time and he taught me the art of listening that it is wisdom to listen to a man. See that? Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life we have a series on that and i will teach you you don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you are you getting my point you are smart enough mentorship is like your assignment why will i choose a man who when people are celebrating me and saying apostle joshua selman you look at me and say young man no problem but there is more work to be done keep that all of those accolades and let's work do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? Mentorship is like assignment. You don't choose. That's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them. He said, oh boy, I am seeing that you like women. Say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this? And he moves from the name you used to call him, maybe man of God or daddy or papa. He says, sir, please. Ah, I don't like women. What kind of thing is this? I am a prophet or I am an apostle. You are an apostle or I am an apostle? <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him I said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies oh i'm a millionaire let money come oh kingdom you will see what will happen and the person says make sure you take out time to start praying because i see money destroying you this is not word of knowledge this is this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience it's amazing how people come for counseling pastor they come on monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come they sit down good afternoon sir i want to seek your advice and for 30 minutes they are just running their mouth and talking and i'm keeping quiet listening to them and after 30 minutes they say i feel very relieved and i say let's pray <laughs> let's pray 
They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually, if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic, how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity? How can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere? Are you getting the point now? so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming god whereas there are irrefutable principles no man outgrows the need to be guided in his life no man at whatever level no man You discover your mentors and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives mentors are not necessarily perfect people please is someone getting blessed tonight mentors are not necessarily perfect people they are people who have come who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth now look at me there is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man please listen this is not human worship when you sit before a mentor or before a great man only ask questions and listen when you sit before a great man that's not time for discussion a lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children. And you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I some I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. 
I'll never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. No, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where we, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter i just start smiling because i know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us holy spirit there is always a price to pay please listen there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor there is always a price it will cost you to follow a true mentor adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life look at me never expect a mentor to adjust to your life you are joking if you cannot adjust to the person's life I'll never forget when I went to Abuja one time to see a particular man of God. Four days, I had not seen him. Four days. And God was my witness that I never complained. I said, Lord, thank you. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege. This is how people too wait for counseling to see me. And they are not complaining. So I have no right to complain. There are people who call me, hello, hello, this and that and that. And I tell them, okay, we have a counselor. I say, please, I don't have that time. I can't wait. I'm busy. Ah, you are coming to see lecturers, professors, great men. And a young man just comes with his sack jeans. Is there any way we can just see sharp, sharp? Please, I have things to do. Pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there. There is a price. Never forget this. There is a price to pay for mentorship. There is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how you wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on, he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And he will continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, he say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. He should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. 
may God help us because if you get this principle alone many of us tonight this is the key to the next level of your life you have neglected the ministry of great men there is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you praise the Lord pursuit is the only proof of passion there are people who get angry maybe they want to see me and maybe we are away on a trip and then they are angry and they call they say i've been calling you for two days and i say i'm sorry what's the issue they say please i've been trusting god for something in my life and you just finished quarreling me you have been calling me for two days i'm not responding whereas maybe i was preaching whereas maybe i was having time with god you know please and please brothers and sisters it takes humility to rise to the top if you are not ready to be humble get set to remain at that level hallelujah i shared with you my story on how i was already preparing to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter before they died i was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and i i made up my mind that when i got there i would insist I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of God your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing you can sow your way into an anointing avoid familiarity i beg you koinonia listen to me let my conscience be clear before god that i taught you this avoid familiarity there are people in my life are daddy prof is here and the way the way that that prof respects me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah many of you do not understand the secret listen please listen this is where you may be missing a lot of things you can be with a man of god for a long time never forget who you are talking to it's not enough to talk to people never forget who jesus looked at them and said before your father abraham was i am and they say ah, what are you saying never forget who you are talking to this is not human worship is the law these are the ancient parts that made people great i never get familiar there are all kinds of men of god something something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation one of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries i won't call their name just to honor the person he had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through and you know he looked at his status and he was offended he is really an honorable person you see i mean the direct like pa of one of the great men of god in the country and he's been trying to reach me and for whatever reason when he got to our protocol department we were in we were in in, in a meeting in um in Quara State and so we could not attend to him and then eventually he got offended and then when he called you know he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant but when he told me who he was I would have said oh God you have told me who you are let me tell you who I am too I just told him I said I'm sorry sir I really apologize I am sorry we do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working we apologize on behalf of myself on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is thank you, sir. 
I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we're just standing, boss, 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 oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment is called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry in the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not these exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. That means everything created has a divine assignment. Everybody say, I have a divine assignment. Whether you know it or not is irrelevant. Just say, I have a divine assignment. Because after this teaching tonight, in the name of the Lord, you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned. There are so many people escorting others. Jacob, had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death and he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them every man in the earth is a walking solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a walking solution to a problem say i am a walking solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand. the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand. you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance. God does not decide your significance. It's God's desire for everybody. He said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, but you decide your significance. There is no reason to envy any man. There is no reason to be jealous. Every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems. And the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance. There are so many men of God 
angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an arm robber is wrong because an arm robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you Jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance i hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion I hate ignorance of the principles of God. I hate the fact that people do not recognize the Lordship of Christ. And these things have constructed my passion. They have built the framework of my teachings. What agitates you? Take note of the pain and the things that annoy you. Write very quickly two things that really agitate you. That every time you see it, you cry and you wish for change. There is an anointing there. There is always an anointing in the place of pain. Pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing. 
Thank you, Jesus Christ. Identify your highest point of anger. Identify your highest point of anger. There is something that agitates you. When you see people go through it, when you see your family members go through it, something in you cries. That's the anointing of the Spirit. Hallelujah. When Moses saw the Egyptians suffering, something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him. Are you getting my point now? To an extent that he killed somebody. Have you been ignoring your pain? Do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit god has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason there are many of us god has has anointed us to be saviors he has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom are you seeing what we have refused we have ignored please let me have your attention don't worry the holy spirit is just doing his thing God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion. I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat, buy, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. I will study my passions and I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God speaking over my destiny. What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you, even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation, but there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show passionately and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put Benny in and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And you are saying, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passion? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the spirit takes over your soul, when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you. Your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. 
every time you mention or a robot what comes into your heart healing is that true benihin healing is that true billy graham evangelism jj okocha is that true if i mention your name and nothing comes to my mind your difference has not been refined enough hallelujah are you getting my point when you say tiger woods golf right tyra banks fashion people see them all smiling praise god if your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word you do not know it you can say my life's mission is is to bring the rescue the the, the lost sheep you know from all the will that look all of that long story there must be a theme that you can live for and die for hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment many of us do not know that god speaks through opportunities god never told david to kill goliath he saw an opportunity and he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity and he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world he got a wife for free he got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity and i want to tell you something god speaks again through favor this is how you know that you have been called in an area never stay in an area where there is no favor it's a sign that god is not there even in the prison joseph was still favored that's a sign that god is with you please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor there are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious god has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography it's a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light 
and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of Joss opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and Yola and all of that, including my neighbor. I mean, neighbors that we grew up together. They took my teaching, my own uncle. My own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying. And then got to find out I was the one. And he cried and said, my own son is in ministry and is changing the world. And I'm here dying. And so that, that familiarity, they received the teaching not knowing it was me. And then when they had now respected the anointing, then God opened up to them, it is this person. Are you getting the point now? That's the reason why, although many of you are anointed, you find out that every time you get home, you just feel ordinary. That presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born. You are the child everybody knows. Even if you tell them God is saying, they say, shut up. What do you know about God? But the day they are ready to receive your anointing, they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter. Your assignment is geographical. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate. Listen, listen, please listen. Look up, look up before you write. Let me explain something to you. Um, come, Sam. How many of you agree and believe that Sam is a powerful worshiper? But do you know, as gifted as Sam can be, Sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated. How many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace and God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you saying they, they kept me in one car they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed i'm almost saying oh god please let this thing not become human worship and i'm i'm shocked honestly when i'm in my hotel room i'm now looking i'm like goodness ah i would discover every other thing that is left that i've not discovered <laughs> oh when you are in the geography of your assignment men will pay you in a way that will shock you they will pay for any and everything to receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time, I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol 
to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and i'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of god that is in you people and everyone here we never, you never see me treat people based on who your father is. I don't want to know whether your father is a minister, whether you are married to, to, the, to a relation of the president. Uh -uh. No, we no man after the flesh. When you come here, we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible. Is someone learning something, please? Let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray. Just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why i never try to do what i am not gifted anointed skilled or trained for I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry now let me advise you especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership there's something i wrote that is very powerful you don't give yourself to people listen you give yourself to god and you give god to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself Give yourself to God and give God to the people. Many preachers are dying and killing themselves. They want to do everything for everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Give yourself to God and then give God to the people. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number three. This is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love.
love your truth. I love my love. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shibala Katabaladaba. Somebody's life is about to change. First Timothy chapter 5, 17 and 18. The last law we'll talk about is the law of honor. The law of honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time I teach on this, something happens to someone's destiny. The law of honor. First Timothy 5, 17 and 18. Look up everybody. Let's read. One, two, read. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 17. And then I'll teach. This for me is one of the greatest laws of success. It may not be like that for you, but this for me Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, one to go. Honor all men and honor the king. Honor all men and honor the king. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. But honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference. To honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness that's what it means to honor to honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness please look up honor in the school of success is the seed for access say it one more time everybody honor is the seed for access you will never access a place a grace an anointing a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you. And you find out that nothing will be. The Bible says, honor all men. And then honor the king. This is why we take our time to worship God. We take our time to honor the king. Honor always creates favor. Let me tell you this. If you've been looking for how to create favor in your life, I'm telling you how it comes now. Favor, honor always creates favor 100% of the time. The favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor. You dishonor men, you will never experience favor. Listen, listen. Look at me. This is Pastor Pete Rock's wife. Get this. Hallelujah. Pastor Pete is my friend. He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband and in the presence of another. Is that true? Is that true? So I am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor. Many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not lead them to you. 
There's all kinds of disrespect around. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I, I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents. You are in for failure. Failure that God will not stop. Except you cry for mercy and change. Is someone getting blessed? Never dishonor elders. I don't care what level of grace you get to. As I am like this, if I see an elderly woman that I know carrying something, maybe she went to grind and all of that, I see mothers around. They go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are. They put it on their head, they are going, and immediately they are going, you see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend, or one guy she calls her boyfriend. They don't even know what they are doing. They are just bouncing and they are, Mom, see ya! And they are going, and the mother is carrying this. This is dishonor. The Bible says if you don't honor your parents, listen to what I'm telling you. It says it will not be well with you. As simple as that. Hallelujah. Oh, I will say it. I will say it. There are many of us, we have no respect at all for elderly people. There are even people that beat their parents. That one is not just that it will not be well with you. You just brought a curse upon your life. If you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person, especially your parents, whether they speak to you or not, I am telling you scripturally, the Bible says, a man that curses his father, his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him. That's what the Bible says. I will never, never rebuke an elder. These are laws. There are many graduates. They thought it's just getting degree. Now you have gotten the degree. Nothing is happening. They thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The law of honor honor creates favor what is favor favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you that's favor when someone is willing to solve your problems for you whether financial problems spiritual problems when you honor men you have access to their grace look let me tell you if a door has been closing again and again and again especially the door to the grace of a man of god check well there is dishonor there the entire ten commandments was all about honor honoring god and honoring men god is so obsessed with honor it's not enough to believe in a man of god you must honor that man to ever get the grace i taught this in commanding results and it's all oh goodness. I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people. Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in, in, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. 
I, I, I said this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman, man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget, oh, this is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything, no job, no marriage, no nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. They had the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset, local champions, and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You're a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing, eh? He's singing, but what's the, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated, so he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. Once you find yourself criticizing people, you are communicating a dissatisfaction. It's natural with human beings. Manage it through the law of honor. Are you getting what I'm saying? I celebrate men of God. I celebrate vessels of honor generously. Many of us are very embarrassed. Let me tell you a few things that you should never do. Look up please. Never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a he says you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and, and carried and all and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day I will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her. I don't care where she's going. This is honor. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know the law of honor. I celebrate men in the secret and in the open. I've been following a conference. A conference right now. I had to follow Mike Murdoch's conference with David Ibiome. And I've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again. There's a conference going on in Koza. I cannot attend it. And I've been following it online. Paying the internet. Right now, 
as I'm preaching, he's paining me, but I'm supposed, <laughs> I'm supposed to have been following the conference. But I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And all. I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found that it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah. Never trivialize greatness, no matter how little it is. Never trivialize greatness. Never trivialize greatness. They invite you to go and preach. And you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana. It, it never is just favor. Don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches. Uh -uh. Celebrate the gift. Celebrate the grace. Do what God has called you to do. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed. If you do not have a seed, look for opportunities to serve. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never see a man of God empty-handed, no matter what happens. And I'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in Malachi chapter 1. That people can't... No, no. You don't bless a great man with leftovers. You bless a great man honorably. I'm teaching you principles that make for great men. I lift my hands in worship As I sing Praises to your name Father, I lift my hands in worship as i sing glory to your name i never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed never 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 is is a taboo as far as i'm concerned never i never go to greet and see an elderly person if if even if i don't take a gift then it means i'm going to send something but many of us we do not understand that these are little principles this is how the kingdom is built you neglect it at your detriment i'm rounding up there are two ways i taught you to receive from a great man one is service and the other is seed if you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no. Say, kill me here. Bring it out. And you carry a bucket. And you are washing Hebrews 7:7. 7, 7, and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. You see a woman, you go to her house and say, Mommy, I came to wash your plates today. Say, no, no, my daughter, there are no plates. Carry the ones that are clean. Say, they are dusty. Soak them again. Lord, this is how I will have my home. This is how I will be blessed. The law of honor. You can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
Now, let me say something. Because I know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening. Please listen to this. Never invite a man of God, whether a music minister, a worship minister, for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him. You see, a lot of people do this in the body of Christ. Let me correct it now. Hallelujah. This is an apostolic ministry. We speak to the body of Christ. And I'm speaking to the body of Christ. It must be corrected. Never invite a man of God that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift. Are you getting my point? There are many people who want to bring every great man of God, but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring Desmond as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot, use what you have. Please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangement. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry, please stand up, stand up. Keep these two seats. Sir, you are welcome. What are you doing? You are not intentional about the spirit of excellence. And now I know that many people have not been trained to recognize this. But I want you to know, you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor. I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session. Immediately it finishes, you just, you just everybody, pack your load and let's leave this place. Never make your ministry like that. There are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of God. Let me use the opportunity and say this. Number one, his hospitality. Hospitality. Especially when you are, it's okay if you are inviting a man of God that is within your region. Please say it because this has not been taught in the body of Christ. Number one, hospitality. Never carry a man of God and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited. No, don't do that. Hospitality. Hallelujah. Prepare very well. Let the man of God eat well. If he's fasting, ask him, don't assume. Don't say, bring only dinner. I already know this guy. He's always fasting. What if he's not fasting that day? Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it will take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium. Honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace. 
Just like teachers, you can never really reward mentors and men of God and great men. Make sure you never bring a man of God. I remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere. They had been disturbing this guy. And when he went to preach, I'm being sincere with you. <laughs> Immediately he finished. They, you know this kind of, this kind of, um, these wire papers. They just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe. And just say, May we thank you for your grace. Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. Now imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now this man left his wife for three days. This is his job. This is where God blesses him. And he comes back after three days. Right? And she's happy. She welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open. You know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA. You know this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put their mouth and say honey just to remind you that uh, junior is going to school day after tomorrow and the man of god becomes angry he's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying never bring a man of god that you are not your capacity don't say i can bring anybody let me tell you the mistake there are many people who try to bring men of god and they overlook these things and when it happens it's like it endorses their error and so they say look even so 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 and so person we have brought him talk more of you you don't know the inconvenience that person went through and he just did it for the sake of the gospel by the grace of god if you see us invite anybody in this house i can tell you at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that god has given us we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed Bless enough that if we call him tomorrow, he'll say, thank you. I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor. Any anointing that you do not honor, you will never receive anything from. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what God is doing in this house. We are going to pray. These keys that I've shared with you will give you uncommon success. You can see the book that I'm writing them. These, these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We have just five minutes to pray. So I want you to take every prayer point very seriously. Begin to bless God for the opportunity to hear this. Lord, we thank you. Go ahead and praise him. I thank you, oh God, for the privilege of hearing a word that can take me. Now I see why I am where I am. Now I see why things have not been happening in my life. Thank you, Lord, because I've been given the keys to the next level. The Bible says, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Outside and inside, pray. Say, Lord, I see that you are no respecter of persons. Pray. Have you been ignoring the ministry of mentors? Men who have experience and grace. Have you been trivializing vessels? Calling them your friends. Calling them your colleagues. Being embarrassed to acknowledge their ability to build and help you. 
lift your voice and pray and say lord from today i receive grace to recognize the vessels that you have put over my life i recognize the grace i take them as mentors indeed i take them as instructors indeed i stop arguing with their instructions i stop arguing with their instructions i receive grace to comply i take their words like the voice of god pray we have just five minutes to pray so pray grace pray for grace never to find yourself talking against a man of God again pray and say Lord I repent from criticizing any great man a man of God a businessman a successful leader my boss in the office my superior I receive grace from today I honor all men I honor the king hallelujah prayer point number two I want you to pray and say Lord that problem I've been anointed to solve reveal it to me my prosperity depends on it my significance depends on it I'm tired of feeling inferior I'm tired of suffering with complex I'm tired of admiring others show me that problem I was anointed to solve that will make my world listen to me show me show me that value I've been anointed to add to my generation when you find your assignment you will become prosperous when you find your assignment you will become distinguished when you find your assignment your background is no longer a factor your education is no longer a factor when you find your assignment your weaknesses are swallowed up by the strength of the problems you can solve I don't care what limitations you have in your life right now your assignment is the key to influence your assignment the problems you are solving when God wants to bless you he will give you greater problems to solve the size of your Goliath determines the size of your throne hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll close i wanted to talk about enemies i'm so sorry i could not i could not talk about it maybe another time but let me just ship one or two things may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you are you hearing what i'm saying may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you listen when enemies persecute you it is because they have seen the tendency for you to become successful are you getting my point enemies are as important as friends many of you are angry you are doing everything to win approval repent tonight you need enemies your friends decide your comfort but your enemies decide your reward every listen and enemies are announcing that your current season is over and a new season is about to open up without enemies there is no promotion battle is the seed for territory whenever you pray for breakthrough god will schedule a goliath if there is no goliath every time you see trouble or challenges change your perception don't cry start rejoicing because that season is wrapping up and another one is opening up
so right now in one minute maybe we'll add one more prayer point say lord every challenge that has come to my life thank you i see it as an opportunity for my lifting it was a disappointment the relationship did not work but thank you it is for my lifting the promotion did not come but it was for such a time as this thank you for the men who persecuted me thank you for the enemies thank you for the evil reports about me they are announcing me in disguise go ahead and pray enemies are important in the school of success they are as important as friends pray change your mindset about enemies change your mindset about challenges change your mindset about persecution they do not come to destroy you they come to make you strong they come to lift you higher go weeping and just for a night joy comes in the morning convert your obstacles to opportunities hallelujah hallelujah don't waste your time trying to explain yourself to critics that is such a waste of energy are you getting me when it, listen when a man is determined to criticize you anything you say can be misquoted but silence cannot be misquoted are you you can misquote me when i talk but when i'm silent you cannot misquote silence are you getting my point now last prayer point lord i've been disrespecting the careers who have the grace for my next level tonight i receive grace to honor them lift your voice and pray some of you after tonight you will need to send text messages to your pastors to your parents to your mentors to your leaders telling them how much of a gift they are to your life telling them how much their grace has blessed you swallow your pride swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride i honor all men lift your voice and pray i honor all men i honor all men i recognize the graces that god has positioned for my next level they may be my friends but i refuse to trivialize their grace they may be my brothers they may be my sisters they may be my genius they may even be people i got born again but i refuse to be familiar with grace i refuse to be familiar with unction i refuse to be familiar i receive their ministry i receive their anointings i sow into their lives i serve the anointing i serve with diligence i serve my way to glory i saw my way to glory listen let me tell you something anytime you are in a place and you hear anybody bringing a nasty conversation about a man of god that you honor and respect get up and leave that place immediately are you getting me if you sit with me and you are talking to me about our daddy prof and you expect me to sit down and say wow I'm, you mean prof is this i will get up immediately god is my witness in fact i will you know me i will rebuke you there and then first and foremost hallelujah you cannot come and sit down and be talking to me about my friend pete rock right or sit down and you're talking to me about oyedeko and this and say see a newspaper they said joshua selman got 10 ladies pray <laughs> my mouth wanted to say something and my spirit held it back praise god there are many of you who are experts at hearing things are you serious you mean prof did this i thought he was supposed to be the 
the, 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 the this and that and that. What is all that? Look, let me tell you. Any man that cannot honor a man that you respect does not deserve to be your friend. He will kill your destiny. And when he kills you, he will call men to come and see you dead. Are you getting my point now? You never talk to me about a man that I honor and expect me to sit down and nod my head and say, I'm not surprised. No. As you are saying it, I would diplomatically push you out. If you don't have anything to say, shut your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. From today, may they experience your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy on common extraordinary success. From today, as you begin to apply these principles, I speak over your life that every door that has been closed over you, I command that door to be open right now. Everyone who is holding the key to your next level, I connect you with their anointings, I connect you with their graces, may you find them, may you recognize them, may you honor them, and may you receive what they have. And anyone who is in need of your grace and anointing, in the name of Jesus, I impart grace upon them to honor you. May they honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Now, please keep standing, everybody. Um, I know that we're out of time, but I will not want to take it for granted. If you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord, please very quickly. You have not made Jesus Lord of your life. This is where it all starts. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. You found yourself walking in a path that is not of God. Right now, Jesus is calling you to make him Lord of your life and to give you a new beginning. At the same time, those who are worshipping with us for the first time, I'd like you to just follow them and come. Those worshipping, stand here. Those praying for salvation, just come and stand here. God bless you, my dear. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. There are people getting born again. God bless you. Just come and stand here if you are giving your heart to the Lord. If you are a, a new person, I want you to just stand here. Very quickly, very quickly. Celebrate them, Koinonia. We just thought on the law of honor. Very quickly. If you are here for born again, don't be embarrassed. Just stand here or you are rededicating your life to Jesus. Just stand here. If you are for both, then you can just stand here and we'll pray together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please keep coming. I honor and celebrate every one of you. Thank you so much. Our mommies, we see a number of our mothers here and all the people that God brought. We truly recognize your grace and we ask that the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. This is Koinonia and we have a prayer and a blessing for you. I assure you that we are going to speak over your life and things will never be the same for you. Stretch your hands, saints of God, and ask the Lord to bless everyone. Bless them. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with favor. We bless you with results. Let your spiritual life be characterized by mighty and great results. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless every visitor, bless every first timer. We love them and we pray that they will partake of the grace that is upon this house. In the name of Jesus, as they return, oh God, may they have unending testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. I thank you for what you are doing in their lives. May they grow from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life, that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to 